video, I'm going to show you how to solve more complicated integrals by using the fact that differentiation is the reverse process of integration, okay? So in the first question, part one, we have to differentiate x squared plus 2 all raised to the power of 4 with respect to x. So remember, when you have to differentiate an expression like this, you must take the power outside the brackets, so 4, and multiply the brackets by this power. Okay, so the part inside the bracket stays the same. The power outside the bracket reduces by 1, so 4 take away 1 is 3. And then you have to multiply that by the derivative of what's inside the brackets. Okay, so if I differentiate what's inside the brackets, here I would have 2x and here I would have 0, so we're multiplying by 2x. So for the last step, you can just simplify. So take the number 4 at the beginning here and multiply it by 2x. 4 multiplied by 2x is 8x. So the final answer is 8x brackets x squared plus 2 all cubed. Okay, so there is the derivative in part 1. In part 2, it says... Hence, find the integral of x brackets x squared plus 2 all cubed with respect to x. So, notice that the expression here that we need to integrate is very similar to the derivative that we just worked out. Okay, the brackets and the power here are identical. It's just instead of 8x, we now have 1x. Okay, also remember that differentiation is the reverse process of integration. So, if we look back at part 1, we differentiated this expression here and we found it to be this. So if you integrate your answer, it should take you back to what you started with, okay? So I'm just going to write that down. If we integrate the derivative that we worked out in part one, so 8x brackets x squared plus two all cubed, if we integrate that answer, it takes us back to the question, okay? So x squared, plus 2, all raised to the power 4, plus the constant of integration c. Okay, so we know this to be true from part 1. So we need to somehow use this to help us solve this more complicated integral. Okay, so at the moment, we know the integral of 8x and so on. This is the one we know. So what we need to do is try and tweak this question so that it simplifies to look like the integral that we actually need to work out. So you need to ask yourself, what can you do to 8x to simplify to 1x? Well, you can divide it by 8. 8x divided by 8 is 1x. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to divide this integral by 8, or times by an 8, that's the same thing, as when you simplify it then looks identical to the integral that we need to work out, okay? So these are the same question, okay? I'm just rewriting it in a different way so that we can now solve, okay? So remember, just ignoring this part for a moment, we know the integral here, 8x and so on. I just wrote it out up here, it's here, okay? So I'm just going to write that out again. But remember, we're no longer working out that integral. We're working out that integral multiplied by an eighth. So you have to do the same thing to your answer and multiply it by an eighth. So that is the integral in part two. So in question 2i, we have to differentiate 2x squared minus 1 all raised to the power of 5 with respect to x. So remember, you must take the power outside the brackets, so 5, and multiply the brackets by this power. Remember, the part inside the bracket stays the same, okay? And then the power outside the brackets reduces by 1. So 5 take away 1 is 4, so that is the new power outside the brackets. Not forgetting at the end to multiply all of that with the derivative of what's inside the brackets, okay? So if you differentiate what's inside the brackets, negative 1 is just 0. And if you differentiate 2x squared, you're left with 4x. Okay, so you have to multiply everything by 4x. So at the end, just simplify. So take the number here, 5, and multiply it by 4x. So 5 multiplied by 4x is 20x. And then we have the brackets 2x squared minus 1, all raised to the power of 4. So there is the derivative. So in part 2, it says... Hence, find the integral of x brackets 2x squared minus 1, all raised to the power of 4, with respect to x. Notice how the expression that we need to integrate 
is very similar to the derivative that we worked out in part one. Okay, the brackets and the power here are the same. It's just instead of 20x, we now have 1x instead. Okay, so also remember differentiation is the reverse process of integration. So when we differentiate that expression in part one, we found it to be this. So if we were to integrate our answer, it would take us back to what we started with. And I'm just going to write that down. So if we integrate the derivative from part one, so 20x brackets 2x squared minus one or raised to the power four, okay? When we integrate that, it takes us back to the start, okay? So it gives us 2x squared minus one all raised to the power five plus the constant of integration c. So we know this to be true from part one, okay? So we need to somehow use this to help us solve this integral given in part two, okay? So we know the integral here. So I'm just going to write it down again. So the integral of 20x, we know this part already. And I'm just going to compare this question with the new integral that we have to work out here. Okay, remember these are virtually the same, it's just instead of 20x we need 1x. So you need to ask yourself, what do you need to do to 20x to get 1x? You have to divide it by 20. 20x divided by 20 is 1x. So we're going to divide this integral by 20, and I'm just going to write it like this. So multiply by a 20th is the same thing as dividing by a 20. Okay, so that now this, when it's simplified, is the same thing as the integral being asked, okay? So now what you can do is write down your integral of 20x and so on. So this part here that I wrote down previously. But remember to just tweak it at the end because what we're actually doing is working out this integral multiplied by a 20th. So you need to remember to multiply this answer by a 20th at the end and that is the integral. So in question 3i, we have to differentiate 1 over 4 minus 3x squared with respect to x. So before you differentiate, I suggest you rewrite this fraction in power form instead, okay? So if I rewrite this fraction, it's the same thing as 4 minus 3x squared, so the denominator in brackets, all raised to the power of negative one, okay? So now that it's in power form, I'm going to differentiate. So remember, you have to take the power outside the brackets, so negative one, multiply this power by the brackets, so four minus the x squared, and the power outside the brackets reduces by one, so negative one, take away one is negative two, and then finally, you have to multiply all of this by the derivative of what's inside the brackets. So if we look at what's inside the brackets, if I differentiate four, I get zero. And if I differentiate this term here, I'm left with negative six x. Okay, so I'm just going to simplify. So take the number here, negative one, and multiply by negative six x. Negative one multiplied by negative six x is positive six x. So the final answer is six x brackets, four minus three x squared, all raised to the power of negative two. And what you can also do at the end is now rewrite it as a fraction to so take it out of power form. So if I do that, 6x will be the numerator and the denominator will be this part here. So 4 minus 3x squared inside brackets, all raised to the power of positive two instead. Okay, so there is the derivative in part one. So in part two, it says, hence find the integral of 3x over 4 minus 3x squared, all squared with respect to x. So notice how this expression that we have to integrate is very similar to the derivative that we worked out in part one, okay? The denominator is identical, it's just the numerator is no longer 6x, it's 3x instead, okay? Also remember that differentiation is the reverse process of integration. So if we look back at part one, we differentiated this expression and we got this. So if we integrate this answer here, it should take us back to what we started with, okay? So I'm just going to write that down. So when we integrate this derivative here, so 6x over 4 minus 3x squared, all squared, respect to x. When we integrate this, 
it takes us back to what we started with. So this fraction, 1 over 4 minus 3x squared, not forgetting to add the constant of integration c, okay? So we know this to be true from part one, okay? So now we need to compare this with the integral that we need to work out in part two, okay? You can see it's very similar, remember, okay? So we need to work out this integral, and we know so far the integral of 6x over 4 minus 3x squared, all squared, Okay, so just like previously, you need to ask yourself, what do you need to do to this question? How can you tweak it so that it goes back to what we actually need to work out? Okay, so we need to change the 6x to 3x. So to go from 6x to 3x, you have to divide by 2, which is the same thing as times in by a half. A half of 6x is 3x. Okay, so when you simplify this question here, it's identical to the integral that we need to work out in part two, okay? So they're exactly the same question, it's just rewritten in a different way so we can use what we worked out earlier to help us solve, okay? So, let's just ignore the half part for the moment. The integral of this, we just wrote down above, is 1 over 4 minus 3x squared plus c. But remember, we're working out half of this integral. So you have to remember to multiply this answer by a half, okay? So I'm just going to pop that fraction in brackets and we're going to times it by a half. So if I simplify that answer, one multiplied by one is just one, so the numerator is one. Two multiplied by four is eight. Two multiplied by negative three x squared is negative six x squared. And here we just have plus a constant c. Okay, so there is the integral.